The king of TVs has been crowned, but should you care? And should it really matter to you? That is the question that I pose to you guys today in this video. I just want to know your opinion on this. But first, let's talk about what's going on with these two screens here. One is the S95B, which was the runner-up to the winner, which ended up being the A95K from Sony, which I still haven't seen yet. I'm going to have this TV very soon. It is on order and it is on the way, so stay tuned. Uh, next to that is the third place G2 from LG, and I just did a review on that. If you missed it, watch it at the end of this video. And I want to talk about these two TVs today, but first, I want to also talk about what went on with the shootout and why I don't think a lot of people should really take it into consideration so much. And I say this in the most respectful way possible because I really enjoy the shootout that happens from Value Electronics and I think the people that put it on are great people and everybody involved in putting it together. It's just a awesome event. I love it and I look forward to it every year. I think it's a lot of fun and I can't wait to go to it myself. With that said, I do not think that most people who watch TV, unless you're going to get your TV professionally calibrated, I don't think what happens at this event should factor into your decision because in all likelihood, you're watching TV in a much different way than it is presented to you in an event like this at Value Electronics. And like I said, this is a reference look at these TVs. It is judged by industry professionals based on reference accuracy alone and that's all this event is at the end of the day and it might not help you out if you're just trying to find a tv that you're going to like the most in an event like this you will see that lcd tvs are going to be at the bottom of the list all of the time and that is because when you take a self-emissive display and you put it in a setting like this where it is in its most accurate mode being professionally calibrated by somebody like D Nice, then you are going to always have those self emissive displays be better than LCD TVs. That's just the way it is. But for the average viewer at home, maybe in a brighter environment, in a daytime living room situation, those LCD TVs that came in fourth and fifth might actually be top one and two on your list because of the environment that you're in. So you have to factor in these things when you pick a TV. Another thing you have to consider is that when these TVs are evaluated, they are compared to a reference monitor. So anything going on with processing that can't be turned off might actually be docked on the TV on the score because a lot of the TV manufacturers these days are doing extra processing that can't actually be turned off. And I'm looking at you, Sony and Samsung, you're the ones doing this. And I actually like it, so please don't stop doing it. But this is something that you have to really understand. The dynamic sharpening that is happening at the system level that really you have no control over from Sony and Samsung, they're always going to be active. This very well could impact the final score. Which brings me to this next point with the two runners up, the G2 and the S95B, which if you haven't guessed the blind test here, the S95B is on the right and the G2 is on the left. Are you shocked? I don't know. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. But anyway, about these two TVs, the thing I want you guys to remember, now this is going to be just my opinion. If you're going to put the S95B in its custom P3 mode, for the color space and you want it in its most accurate filmmaker mode i think that you'd be better off just getting an lg g2 because when i compared them using this mode side by side i pretty much got a similar result and the g2 is a better value it comes with a mount and a five-year warranty and the build quality is much better and while it was in this mode i did see some instances where the g2 was actually better than the s95b However, if you use the S95B in filmmaker mode using custom BT2020 color space on HDR, I think that you will actually have a better experience using the QD OLED technology, and I think you'll see the differences clearly between the G2 and the S95B, like I did, and like I can demonstrate to you guys right now on the side-by-side. -side. So there are things that just really pop out 
so much better when you are using this mode. And I think you're seeing the full range of QD OLED when you are in the BT2020 color space. Yes, it's not accurate. And I don't think most people would be able to tell unless they're used to reference accuracy or have an eye for reference accuracy to begin with. Uh, because it's not like things are oversaturated to the degree of being in a native color space or anything like that. It's actually pretty well saturated and I think the colors look nice and they're vibrant and they're rich in this color space. Now the reason why you have to do this is because the S95B does not have a auto detect mode where it will tell you if the content that you're watching is actually in the P3 color space or the 2020 color space. So you have to set one that you prefer. Honestly, at the end of the day, that's really what it is. And I prefer the 2020 color space. I think it looks much better on the S95B. I got the same saturated colors that I was getting from the G2, but I also felt like it was more impactful uh, for me on the S95B when I used BT2020. But when I used P3 color, it felt a little washed out next to the G2. I think in the shootout, it was probably in P3 color space as well, but I can't really confirm that. Um, but I'm guessing that's what it was. One more thing I wanted to add about the shootout when it comes to the QN90B, when I saw this TV, man, it was so impressive. And I feel like I keep hearing mixed results with this TV. And I don't know if it's the firmware, if it's hardware, but it does seem like there is a lot of just a weird batch of QN90Bs out there. So just be aware of that when you're looking at this TV. I personally wouldn't get the QN90B over an OLED in a dark room, but for a bright room, I would certainly get the QN90B or the QN95B. Um, so it is still worth considering in my opinion. The X95K also surprised me as a lot of people seem to be liking that at the shootout as well. And there has been a lot of mixed uh, reviews on that TV. So maybe there has been some firmware updates since those reviews. I don't know. Um, that is one thing that I think is an interesting TV that's out there is the X95K. And I hear that it's better at the 85 inch than in 75 and 65. So also keep that in mind. Now, before I end this, I have one question to ask you guys. What are you looking forward to the most about the A95K versus S95B video that I'm going to do? I have a custom poll in the community tab on the YouTube channel. So if you are subscribed to the channel and you go to the community tab, you can vote on this poll. So check it out and let me know what you want to see. You can tell me in the comments as well. I'll do my best and try to include that in the side by side. If you want to see more videos and side-by-sides from me, check out the video right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.